Hi, I'm David with Portrait Displays, and in this video, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Sony calibration process. We often receive feedback from our customers and how their calibrations are going. And one of the common questions we receive is about the color management system on a Sony TV. Today, I'm working with the Sony A95L QD OLED. We have our C6 HDR5000 as the meter, and we're using Calman Studio with the AutoCal Sony workflow. Of course, you can do this in Calman Home or Calman Ultimate. Now, I've already calibrated the SDR setting on this TV using Calman Studio with the Sony AutoCal workflow. So I'd like to start the post calibration capture. I'm going to come down here to the bottom right and I'm going to hit read series. I'd like to take a look at the results of my calibration as I've walked through the workflow. Next, we'll evaluate those results and then see how the color changes when we change the EOTF or gamma curve. Okay, our post calibration capture is finished. As you'll notice, our EOTF is tracking very nicely. We've got an average uh, delta E of 0.5 on the grayscale with a max of 0.8. And we've got our CIE diagram here where our primary and secondary colors are hitting their targets with our delta E chart having an average of 0.3 with a maximum of 0.5. Now, again, we're only measuring the outer portion of the BT709 target here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to come over to the saturation sweeps. And I'd like to take a quick moment to see how our inner portion of the color gamut is being mapped after the calibration process. So we're going to hit read series here down in the bottom right, and let's take a look at where we are. Now, you may notice during the calibration process of a Sony display, we recommend calibrating to 2.2 EOTF or a 2.2 gamma curve with BT709, and then changing that after the fact. That's optimized for the calibration process for the Sony, but when you change it after the fact, you'll notice the color changes, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Okay, so as you can see, the saturation sweeps are hitting their targets here on the CIE diagram, and our delta E chart here has an average of 0.3 with a maximum of 1. But of course, we've calibrated the Sony A95L to BT709 at 2.2 as a best practice, but we're not going to use the Sony A95L at BT709 with 2.2 because the standard's BT1886, which actually happens to be closer to 2.4 with a quantum dot OLED. So, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to come over to Calman. And I'd like to change my target here to a power 2.4. So now we're changing our target to 2.4. You'll see that the color has shifted. And the reason the color has shifted on the saturation sweeps here is because we've now changed our target and we were optimized for something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another history here in the top left. They okay, now have a clean page to work with. I'm going to come over to the Sony and I'm going to change the gamma. So come over to picture. We're going to come down to brightness. And we're going to change the gamma from 0 to minus 2. That should bring us closer to that 2.4. So let's exit the menu. Now let's go back to Calman. Now I'm already on the saturation sweeps, but you know what? Let's make sure we're actually tracking 2.4. So let's come back over to post calibration capture. And let's set up another history. We'll go to history too, so we have a fresh set of measurements. We can hit read series in the bottom right corner. And now Calman's going to take a post calibration capture with our new gamma target. Okay, so you'll notice now that the post calibration capture has finished. And what you'll see here is our EOTF is actually tracking really well to that 2.4 target. We now have a max of 1.1 with an average of 0.6 here on the Delta E chart. So, you know, very much well within our repeatability with what we expect, especially in this room with all the lights. And as we come over to our CIE diagram, though, you'll notice red, green, blue, they've all pushed out a little bit on that CIE and our error has actually gone up to about a max 1.3. So still not the end of the world with an average of 0.9, but still not ideal. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to come back now to that saturation sweeps we were just looking at. And you may remember we set up history too. So we've got a fresh set of measurements we can do. And let's hit read series because this is the question that we often get from customers. They say, hey, we follow the best practices. We do the 2.2 EOTF and then our color comes out when we go to 2.4, a little bit off. And what's happening here, what we believe is happening here, is the image processing path is not optimized for a 2.4 EOTF. And because it's not optimized for a 2.4 EOTF, you're getting errors in the color gamut mapping, and those errors are being shown at the edge of the gamut. So you'll notice here as this is measuring, 
we can see it right now where we see red at about 20% saturation. Oh, that looks really good. It's right on the target. The Delta E seems pretty low. We go to 40% saturation. We go, oh, that's actually pretty good. That Delta E is pretty low. We start to get up to that 60%. You can start to see this getting a little oversaturated. It's getting a little too much saturation. 80%, much more. It's starting to get out of that box. And once you get up to 100% of BT709, you're noticing that that red dot is now out of that box and our Delta E down here has gone up to a 1.3 on that red. And you'll start to see this as this is measuring throughout the green, the blue, you'll see it on the magenta, the cyan. And you might ask, and this is the question we often get, well, how do I fix this issue? And unfortunately, the Sony only allows for a CMS adjustment, which means a color management system. We're able to adjust red, green, blue, yellow, cyan, magenta. And we're only able to adjust it at that one point. If you're trying to fix this, what's going to happen is you're going to start to move in the edge colors, but you also move in the inner colors because you only have that one adjustment. So it's a global adjustment. So you might see, oh, I can get 100 really well, but then the inner colors are going to start to desaturate and those are going to have a larger error. If you think about content and what we watch, most of the colors that you're watching are actually on the inner side of this gamut. You're not usually looking at fully saturated red, fully saturated green, fully saturated blue. You're looking at more flesh tones and colors throughout the range that are not always at that 100%. So it's much more important to have these inner colors optimized than to have the outer colors optimized. What we'd like to see is we'd like to see Sony come up with a solution where they correct the image processing path to fix these edge color gamut errors so that we can have better, more accurate images in BT709. I hope you enjoyed the explanation. We'll see you on the next one.